dedicate their lives to helping orphaned animals. They open their hearts and homes to all the challenges of raising a young life, no matter how large or small. They are the Wildlife Nannies. Today on Wildlife Nannies, 10-week-old orphaned vervet monkey Alfie gets disinfected before joining the other orphans for the night. He'll face his first visit to the monkey house and a trip into the wilderness under the care of his nanny, Zilka. And Dolphin Juan. He's the darling of visitors to the Loro Park and will face the challenge of his first live show in front of an audience. He's been practicing for weeks with his trainer, Miguel. Will this quick learner be able to perform with the help of his mother and grandmother? And today on our wildlife moment, it's high season at the wild animal station Sachsenhagen with Marine, who takes care of all sorts of foundlings. Zilke van Einem is running the Bambalela farm and has taken care of vervet monkeys for many years. These small monkeys are often found hurt or confused in the wild. Either their mother was shot or they lost their clan in the wilderness. Today, there's a new arrival. Zilke is excited to meet her newest foundling and hear his history. <laughs> Um, according to the paper here, yeah, the uh, mother was killed by um, people for the pet trade. Um, so what they do is they go and find the mothers with babies. They kill the mother so that they can sell the babies on next to the road to people. Um, and by that, it sets a market there for the animals. And we urge the people not to do that. This little guy doesn't seem injured. His breathing's good, and there's no broken ribs or bullet wounds. Zilka quickly determines that he's only 10 weeks old and names him Alfie. 27 centimeter. Nice, strong. And this is Alfie's new home, the Bambalela farm in South Africa. Instead of pigs and cattle, this is a paradise for foundlings. Zilka and her family, and volunteers, take care of all sorts of animals here. The first station for the newcomer is the bathroom and a thorough shower. This is necessary to take care of all the parasites, lice and ticks that Alfie might have acquired in the wild. It's a big shock for Alfie. He's certainly never been bathed before. Zilka tries to keep the little fellow calm, but this foamy bath is really not his cup of tea. <laughs> Alfie passed this wet challenge with flying colors. And now he can be introduced to the rest of the animal family that lives here. knowledge about monkeys, I had to learn rather quickly and the most important learning is through practical because the monkey were here and observing them, that taught me a lot and then obviously all the books one could get and talking to other people who's got experience with monkeys and apes for over 40 years, learning from them, changing information. In the morning, Alfie will be ready for his first trip to meet his new monkey family. But will his new family accept him? Two-year-old dolphin Juan lives with his grandmother and mother. His trainer Miguel takes care of all the dolphins, but his favorite is Juan. Because the smallest dolphin is still very playful and needs special attention and care. He's an animal with a wonderful disposition. He gets along with everyone. He's lovely and so noble. I think he will be the head of the family one day. For his age, he already does a lot of things we never thought he could ever do. He really learns very quickly. I was there when he was born. My colleagues and I have taught him almost everything. He's a very fast learner. 
But Juan still has to learn many of the maneuvers that the big dolphins already know inside out. And that takes time and effort. The park presents five dolphin shows daily, and Juan will have to cavort in front of an audience very soon. In order to prepare for his big debut, he undergoes a rigorous training schedule with Miguel daily. He loves it when you play with him. He looks for me all the time. I'm like a toy to him. He calls me, prods my legs, my feet, my hands, and is playing the whole time. He just loves it. We use this time to teach him exercises with the feet, with pushing. And with the games, we'll get him used to new exercises. And slowly we can train him more and more, until we can integrate him into the show. Juan and his extended family make their home at the Loro Park on the Spanish island of Tenerife. Every morning, Miguel prepares breakfast for Juan. He's still nursing with his mother, but also eats fish already like the big dolphins. He eats a variety of fish. It's a selection that helps him to get all the nutrients he needs to keep on developing. And we'll also give him vitamins and added supplements. These make up for the nutritional loss from freezing the fish. The dolphins get their food while training. Grandma and Mom show little Juan what to do, and he then copies them. Afterwards, there's always a reward. But will he be able to perform in front of an audience soon? It's bedtime at the Bambalela farm, and that means diaper time. Although these foster mothers are with their foundlings all day long, the evenings are a lot more pleasant and drier with the help of diapers. Zilka came up with the mini diaper idea two years ago. Before that, she had to get up every two hours to clean her babies. This hygienic, easy solution sure makes her nights more peaceful. And all her monkeys now even have time to romp around a little before it's finally bedtime. The ostriches and other birds are always the first to rise in the morning. All the mothers are still fast asleep with their foundlings and one can see what a close bond these babies form to their adoptive mothers. But before too long, it's time for breakfast. Zilka and her volunteers mix normal baby milk with antibiotics to strengthen their little foundlings' immune systems. A spoonful of honey also gives them extra energy. He is the second worst monkey to work with because what you just did now, biting. The social behavior consists out of biting. All emotions are shown with biting. If he's happy, he bites. If he's sad, he bites. If he's angry with me, he just bites harder. So that makes it a bit ifish to work with them. So stärken des Immunsystems. All the milk has now been prepared for all the babies. But there's no rest for the new arrival, Alfie. A surprise is waiting for him after his meal. It's time to visit the monkey hut. Will the other monkeys accept him in their clan? At Loro Park, Juan still has a lot to learn from Miguel before he'll be ready to star in the big dolphin show. This gesture is so that she will blow air out of her blowhole. We're just starting to get her used to blowing bubbles. We blow the whistle so that she'll start blowing. The whistle is a very important element in Juan's training, and it makes the dolphins pay close attention. These are the easy exercises. The somersaults are the difficult ones. This here is easy. I make a gesture, he blows bubbles. He just has to follow the movement of my hand. That's how he can learn so quickly. But 
But Juan's relationship with his mother is also critical in this learning process. These two have a very close connection. She protects him no matter what happens. She's always the mother. If there are problems within the group, she helps him. The grandmother also helps the little one and the mother a lot. She has her eyes on them both all the time and watches over them. Juan is still making mistakes and needs to run through the show elements with Miguel over and over again. Only practice makes perfect. You have to give them play time as well as training time. But to tell the truth, it's really all connected. If Juan's concentration lags, his mother is brought in to set a good example. It's so much easier when mom shows you how. But today, even that's not working out all the time. Miguel is still apprehensive. There's a lot riding on getting his baby ready soon. Will Juan manage to do his tricks during the first upcoming show? It's a big day today. Silco wants to introduce Alfie to the other inhabitants of Bambalela Farm. The sight of all these strange monkeys is still a bit much for shy little Alfie, and no wonder. I'm going to learn here that it's natural to be in a troop. So they're really social animals that you see. He's responding really very well. He doesn't want to run away. So he's greeting them. They are greeting him. They adopt babies so easily. And that is a nice part of him, having it easy. Once he must go in here in a few couple of months, then he'll be just be part of them, like he has been from the beginning. Come, Alfie, let's go in. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, babies. Hello, yeah. We'll just let him go in alone and just watch how it turns out. Everything possible is being done so that Alfie integrates into the clan. And it looks like this little female is welcoming him already. If I enter the sanctuary with a baby in my arm, then I'm really, really the most important monkey in there. And which would mean, because mothers are really very well protected, and because I'm a mom then, they come and everybody takes interest in the baby, wants to have a look at the baby, and they start grooming me for favors. Favor meaning they want to hold the baby, they want to look at the baby, all these things. The next stop is the Monkey Kindergarten, where lunch is being served. For now, the vervet monkeys are still dependent on their milk rations. And without her volunteers, Zilka wouldn't be able to take care of all these babies. Alfie has a healthy appetite, and after his meal, he doesn't even object to a little cuddling. What's very important with our work with the monkeys is a lot of, to give them lots of love and security and just to be there with them. We have to watch out for dehydration. That is normally fatality killer rate, 80% of them. And as long as we keep them hydrated, they are fine. And they get the right diet here with us, get plenty of love, get the support system from their own kind, being together in a group, being a social animal like they are. I think that is the success we are having here. But the biggest challenge is still ahead. Alfie will get his first exposure to his natural habitat. How will he react? This is a wildlife foundling station. 
the animals at the shelter are either eventually released back into the wild or remain here. Newcomer fox Dee Dee was found in the woods by hikers and brought to this shelter near Hanover, Germany. The station has operated since 1982 as a place for injured or orphaned local wildlife. Nanny Marine is Dee Dee's favorite, and it's no wonder. Of course it's fun to raise these foxes. They are so cute. But the most important thing is that they'll get released back into the wild. We don't want to get too attached to the wild ones, so we don't name them. Animals that are pets or stay here longer get names, but never the wild ones. Foxes are no problem. They're really easy to reintegrate into the wild. Even though it looks like Didi is really tame, pretty soon he won't want to associate with humans anymore. We'll become totally uninteresting to him as soon as he doesn't need milk from us anymore. He'll quickly lose his connection to humans and become wary of human contact. Didi will soon find a whole new life amongst his own kind, just as nature intended. After breakfast, Maureen has to leave Didi for a little while in order to take care of all the other animals on her list. Two-month-old wild boar baby Armin was also found by hikers along the shore of a canal. And boy, is he starving. There's nothing like a good circular technique when cleaning out your bowl. Maureen really has a good laugh whenever she's with Armin. It's also part of her job to take this energetic orphan out for some daily exercise. We got Armin when he was really small, just a few days old. Now he's gotten really big and he's growing so quickly, but he's really too tame. When you raise wild boars, they always become much too tame. You can't reintegrate them back into a wild group. Armin's main occupation is playtime. And with this boar baby, that can get pretty wild. This little fox is now ready for his next meal and Maureen prepares some fennel tea mixed with cat milk. You can't forget that these animals have to be released into the wild again where they belong. I think that's the hard part for most people. Generally, people of course want to cuddle these babies, of course they're cute. But we should be even more thrilled when they can be returned to the wild. They don't belong in a home as a tame household pet. Maureen is there for all her foundlings day and night and her biggest reward is seeing them released back into the wild. After breakfast, a good stomach massage is in order to encourage the digestion. The mothers do that with the babies in the wild, and this baby still needs a little help going to the bathroom. Without Marine, he'd get quite the bloated tummy. Now that the fox baby is taken care of, Marine can return to Armin's big challenge. He's already waiting for his first visit with a pot-bellied pig. Even though Armin can't ever be released into the wild, he still has to learn to live among other animals, not humans. Domestic pigs Schnitzel and Knudel live at the station permanently. They were confiscated from a private person and thus came to the park. They're the perfect test case for all the wild boar babies that come through here. Looks like Armin's not quite ready for friendship with these two. But Marine will try again. And maybe she'll have more luck with her foxes. This is the first meeting for these two young foxes. The little one is very interested in Didi, and the feeling seems mutual, and that's a good sign. Cool. 
Well, that was pretty good with these two, at least. It's so good. Dee Dee looked totally glad to meet another fox. You could really tell. Looks like the first step towards life in the wild was successful. The big moment has finally arrived. Juan's practiced enough and is ready for the big test. He'll be integrated into the act. Juan's been separated from the other dolphins some of the time so that he'll learn to be more focused. If he was constantly with the others, he'd be distracted and spend all his time playing. It's an exciting moment for trainer Miguel Sosa as well, but he feels confident that Juan will rise to the occasion. It's showtime, and it looks like all that intensive practice has worked. Juan even accomplishes a few of the tricks better than ever before. One maneuver doesn't turn out that well, but Miguel is satisfied. Although the little dolphin hasn't managed some of the show maneuvers, he'll improve. He simply needs more training and practice. There are some shows in which he works less, in others more, and he stays with me the whole time. But that probably has to do with his age. He's little and small, and you have to accept that he'll sometimes only do what he feels like. In another show, he'll be better again. By the second show, it's time to try again. And Miguel's faith in Juan pays off. He's doing much better already. This time, only one mistake instead of three. The audience doesn't notice Juan's mistakes and looks like it's already embraced him as their new favorite at the park. Juan was much better in the second show, better than in the first one, because this time he was focused on me. That was great. And so, mom and grandma can be proud that their offspring is now a member of the show and enjoy his moment in the spotlight at Laurel Park. Today, the whole monkey clan leaves its comfortable home for the first time. Everyone will enjoy the afternoon on a trip down to the lake. What luxury! The babies are being carried by family, volunteers, and even visitors. Everyone is helping with this big swim action. Vervet monkeys are not water shy, but Alfie looks like he's not quite comfortable in these new surroundings yet. He's still very uncertain. He'd like to get down. I mean, he sees all the others enjoying themselves. But his instinct is probably saying, water, danger. So he stays with mommy. He's clinging to me pretty tightly. You see, he wants to go. Okay, if I, there he goes, finally, great. Finally, Alfie joins in all the fun. Looks like he's instinctively realizing that this is his new home and that he's safe here. The motivation behind all of this is conservation. Uh, survival of the species, because the rabbit monkey's future is really unknown to most of the people. Two little studies have been made and the numbers are dwindling. So we really try here to give any orphaned monkey or injured monkey another chance. Come on, swim, eh? Yeah! Okay, poor John. <laughs> Although Alfie's first swim practice is still somewhat involuntary, he'll soon get the hang of it. As long as Silka and volunteer Lou Marie are nearby, 
he still seems to enjoy his first time in the water. The threat for velvet monkeys is that they might be extinct in the near future. There's only 250,000 left where there used to be millions roaming free. And to do something about it is to take care of the orphaned and the injured one. And one day soon, Alfie will be able to play in the wilderness again without the help of Silka. And that will be a proud moment for Silka and Alfie. Next time on Wildlife Nannies. An exciting day for tree kangaroo Dorothy. This little baby meets an eagle and is left alone in the rainforest.